from Dance Sport Live. We're here at the Blackpool Dance Festival. Next to me, I have Peter Daskalov and Zia James, WDC Amateur Latin uh, European Champions, and Blackpool Amateur Latin Rising Star winners, and absolutely great dancers. Hi, how are you? Hey, good. Hi. All right. Good. Good. Yeah. Congratulations for for last night. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Like when you when you won the third place, the crowd absolutely <laughs> went mad. <laughs> it was a yeah. special moment for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's well, your best result in amateur so far, is it? Uh, so far, yeah. yes, in Blackpool. In Blackpool. Yes. Sure, yeah. 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 Definitely. And um, how about the crowd in Blackpool? Do you is it always as good as last night, or <laughs> last night was something more special? Uh, I don't know. I think in Blackpool, people are always uh, more prone to having moments like that or having nights like this, and they're excited for something happening. I think people are always just waiting for something special to happen. Um, if it's every year, I don't know. I think in, in a way it depends on us dancers. Yeah, um, I think so too. Because I think if, if we don't do our part, I don't think the crowd will if just If we don't mental. give, we won't receive anything. Yeah, so I, I exactly. think it, it varies. I think the public is very ready to give, mm -hmm. it, 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 to, to cheer you on, if you give to them first, obviously. Yeah. Um, so they're ready for it. But um, I think yesterday was more special than normal. Yeah, I think for sure. so too. That's how I felt. For us, it yeah. Is. For us, yeah. it was, yeah. 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 For me, sitting in the crowd, it was <laughs> like that. Yeah, it was more special. And which dance do you think was the best one? For you? I don't know. I enjoyed the whole day. Oh. Um, yeah. For me, there wasn't really a, a, a dance or anything. Uh, it just from, for some reason, that it, it just felt different yesterday. It felt more relaxed. It felt more comfortable. I mean, Blackpool has always been our favorite competition, mm -hmm. but it yesterday was somehow different and actually to a certain extent it remind my personal feeling it reminded me of uh, of the year we first made the final yeah. throughout the day i felt in a similar way mm. than three years ago um the, so, the yeah. whole the whole experience of yesterday was yeah like that year we made the final for the first time in the sense of it was very overwhelming with the positivity and the mm. response uh, throughout, the it, throughout the day, you know, in the changing room when people walk past you, but also uh, on the floor, the reception that we got. Um, it was just generally a very emotional and very um, overwhelming feeling. And I, I actually went back home last night and I said to my parents, I said, you know, I said, I, you're right, because they're all about, it's about the journey and not the result. And I said, don't get me wrong, of course I'm pleased that we were able to change a result and come higher than normal. That's always great. But that feeling that I had last night going to bed was very overwhelming and it, it really proved the point that it's not about winning. It is really about trying to dance your best and getting people's response. And then whatever, if, if you're third or first or fifth or semi-final or wherever you finish, yeah. it, it that doesn't really matter. If you are able to, I guess, reach out to people and, and touch people mm -hmm. and, and be able to express. That, okay. That's the <laughs> emotional part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> beautiful words. You're making me emotional now, <laughs> which is not good for the camera. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about um, how did you start dancing? How was your first tryout? How you decided to <laughs> dance together? Uh, Just walk us through a bit of your <laughs> dance history together. Um, okay, well, <laughs> that's always an interesting story with yeah. us. It yeah. was actually I I believe that it, <clears throat> that it first started about ten years ago because ten years yeah, ago that, was my uh, first my yeah. very very first Blackpool amateur Blackpool, um, and that was the year when Zia won the under twenty one for the first time. And I, was I out of the first round and, I, and I was out of the first round and I just remember uh, being with one of my friends um, at the second balcony um, looking at the final and I, I said to him I remember saying to him one day I'm gonna dance with this girl because <laughs> I, I knew that she's like only 16 she was my age she was only 16 but she was just so great and back then he was like yeah right yeah dream on <laughs> buddy dream on but um, then a couple of years later I moved to Denmark um, and I started dancing with a girl in Denmark in the same club as Zia and you so You had on. heard from some other Bulgarians, well, Ina Yiliasko yeah. yeah. being one of them, and she was in Denmark at the time, uh, speaking very highly of my mom and her teaching, and she was basically the main teacher in the club, yeah. and uh, your other friend was also dancing with another girl, and yeah. they were all speaking very highly about it, so, yeah, you basically came to learn 
more, didn't you? And you, yeah. you found another Danish girl also same age? Yeah, because you said no initially. Because <laughs> I initially ba- said no. <laughs> so basically what happened is I wrote to Zia when she split with Morton and uh, what happened was basically I was quite honest and said that I'm willing to work and so on, but my parents cannot really support me. You know, Eastern Europe is yeah. difficult, yeah. etc. And I never heard back from Zia actually again. <laughs> And then years later, like after I've been dancing with this girl from Denmark for almost three years, I, Lena actually, uh, I showed Lena the message and she couldn't believe it. Like she didn't know that that has been me and like all, all, all along and so on. Oh my God. So what happened was we, um, we had a talk um, after I finished my partnership in 2013 mm-hmm. and um, a couple of weeks later we started. Been, yeah. I was always a bit hesitant because Peter had this reputation in the club because obviously we'd known each other for many years. We'd, we'd be practicing together in the same club and all that. And um, obviously I had thought Peter was a great dancer all along and I had also kind of uh, respected him because I knew that, uh, you know, he was intelligent and I quite liked that. But apart from that, there was nothing about Peter that I really liked. <laughs> I thought he was a little bit of a weirdo. I thought he was just... <laughs> You know, he was always just with his headphones on and quiet. Yeah. yeah, I just thought he's just strange and maybe a little bit arrogant. So we didn't really like it. We didn't speak at all. And uh, and uh, but Peter also had this reputation of being a little bit lazy. So when we well, when I was thinking, okay, maybe we should dance together. I actually did the old-fashioned positive list and negative <laughs> list, and I was like, okay. Hmm, how are we going to work our way around the negatives here? And we had actually a long talk about it before we started dancing together, oh how we were going to yeah, sort that out. It's always good to make a list. Though. Yes, the good, yeah, practical woman way is to make the list. <laughs> oh my God. You're an Aries, right? No. I'm not, actually. Yeah. Peter is. I'm the yeah. Aries. Yeah. He's the Aries. Okay, yeah. and you are? Uh, on the borderline between Pisces and Aquarius. Okay. But either way, they say that the water signs are very um, adaptable exactly. and flexible. Yeah. And that's true. I f- figure out in my life with Peter <laughs> that every- it's necessary. It's funny because everybody thinks that I'm the boss in our partnership. Right? Yeah. Everybody thinks that I'm the one that runs the show, makes the decisions. All that. I'm so not. <laughs> it, it's completely the opposite way. Yeah. Even, even within the dancing, you Everything know, runs it's Peter who decides what step in rumba we're going to do. It. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever you want, we'll find a way. That's it's, uh, he, he runs the show, basically. <laughs> sure. They're in the shadows with yeah. the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> in the background, for sure. Yeah. Moving the whole thing. Good. And how about the first tryout? Was it, uh, did you know instantly that... Um, well, we never really had a tryout. Did no, we? no, it was just because, a decision to dance. Yeah, because we had known each other and we were used to being like on group classes mm. weekly and stuff. So we would switch partners. Yeah, if you yeah you switch no. partners. So we or have whatever, so. already touched mm-hmm. and danced a little bit together. But for us, so. it was not so much about if the connection felt. For me, well, for me, it was not if the connection felt good or not. Mm-hmm. That was one of those things that you know we can work on that to okay. make that better. Um, but it and, and we knew that height wise that we fit together. This we knew already. Um, so for me, it was just trying to work around um, logistics. Yeah, logistics. Like when we lived in Denmark, we well, we were never teaching. Um, it, there was nobody to teach, so we were actually cleaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was our way of making money, and uh, it was more about okay, how are we how are we gonna make enough money mm-hmm. to help each other? Because yeah. yeah, you you had had a a, work, a a job through your previous partner. Her dad had a company yeah. that you could work in. And I was very nervous at the time um, because I felt like, well, I, I can't offer yeah. Peter any work. We thing, needed yeah. to find ways to go about it. So we actually hit, we met at a cafe in town and talked about these things, but we never actually had a tryout. Like no, we just kind of in the great, studio. Okay, let's start practicing. Yeah, we just tried to work our way around the yeah logistics and the practicality of it all. Yeah. Um, and then we were like, okay, let's get to work. And yeah. Yeah, we started putting some choreography together and yeah. it started from there. <laughs> and um, I know that obviously uh, we know um, Azia's parents, Lini and Colin James, um, and your father was a famous dancer as well, a yeah. ballet dancer. Yeah. Uh, how's growing up in the world of dancing? <laughs> I think you should if, go if we could get a pound for every time we were asked that question, yeah. right? Really? <laughs> yeah. Everybody asks this question. Yeah. Um, 
the first thing I always say is that I don't know any different. Uh, so it's normal to mm. me. Mm. Um, many people ask, especially I, I guess you know, g- girls and their mum. Some like can sometimes be very close, but also like fight a lot. Mm. I've never had that with my mum. She. My parents got divor- divorced when I was about mm-hmm. 10 years old mm-hmm. um, and my dad was a little bit out of the picture for a few years and that was when my dancing started to become more serious, you okay. know, at, mm-hmm. at 11, 12, mm-hmm. it became more serious. Um, so it was more my mum who was involved uh, at the time and um, I don't know, for me it's always been super easy because of the fact that my parents have been in every single situation that I'm going through, right from when I was 12, dancing under 21, mm-hmm. and having the pressures of dancing with an older partner, mm-hmm. uh, to dancing yesterday in the amateur final, you know, they, they know what it feels like. So they, they know what it takes. They know what it takes, they know what it feels like, so they also know what to say, and they also know how to be supportive. Yeah. Um, rather than maybe having parents that know nothing about dancing, you know, they might not know what to say they or push in the wrong ways. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. might know or say the wrong or just things. not understand how, how the, yeah, what what it is that you're really going through. So, yeah. I would actually say some people think that I'm I have advantages because of my parents, um, and I think I do. Maybe not in the way that most people would understand, yeah. but I I do think that I have an advantage because. Growing up in an environment where your parents have tried it on their own bodies, uh, it gives a whole other support system, which I'm so grateful for. Like I always say, I could not do what I do without my parents there, and they were the first ones who walked off of the prize presentation yesterday. They're the first ones I go and say thank you to. Amazing, good for you, Peter. It's uh, I I can only say the same because I think it, it's really a blessing to. Okay, if you choose to do dancing, it's a blessing to have parents that have had the same background because you know that you will get the support 100%. I think that's really the thing because some people have the talent, they they have the passion, they they have everything that it takes apart from maybe support from home or Or, guidance or just like just the 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 support that you can get or the the fact that you know no matter what you choose to do within dancing your parents will always back you up they will not be like okay so what about your exams yeah what about about your education or maybe you should do that and exactly so because they took the same risks um and maybe didn't finish an education or left the education as not so important part of their life so uh, that's really the difference i think um apart from that it's maybe a little bit tough every now and again because they're always searching for excellence exactly. um and well, the expectation is higher you know i mean the amount of times i've heard in my life from from actually top professionals and they will say it straight to my face oh but but usia i mean with, with the with the amount of knowledge that you have i mean it's amazing that you're not better than what you are uh, I've heard that so many times um, and, and people expect also much more so I think that's also the other side of the coin that people don't realize that there's also a whole lot of pressure uh, because people expect more from you because of the background. Yeah. With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And in terms of advice, uh, what is the most valuable piece of advice that your parents gave to you? So far, that's a tough question. That's a tough, <laughs> that's a tough one. Because annoyingly, so you know how we always say that at the end of the day, although we don't like to admit it, parents are always right, yes. and, and it's kind of the same thing. Like I don't like to admit it, but they are right. Um, I I don't know. I'm probably sure there are many, but the first thing that pops to my mind, at least, is uh, because it's becoming more evident through my own journey the whole thing about enjoy the journey because the years will be over so quickly um and yeah it, it's not about the end result it is really about the journey and i always thought yeah, yeah but because I'm, I'm quite a competitive person so i always thought yeah, yeah that, this is something they say you know old and wise but it is about <laughs> the result but i'm 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 honestly learning now um it, the result is becoming yeah less important to me because i do really enjoy the process and I'm lucky to have Peter to do it with. So I think that was the best advice they gave me, to enjoy the journey. Okay, and for you, Peter? 
I remember very clearly a quote actually from Colin that has always stuck to my head and um, I don't know if I say it right but I remember it like this he said when the going gets tough the tough get going okay and that has always stuck to my head every single time it really starts being difficult not even only in dancing sense because actually a lot of the thing in order for us to to have successful dancing I think a lot of the factors are outside dancing like everyday life work etc etc so when things start getting tough this always comes back to my mind and i'm already quite a a fighter and a rebellious type of guy so it it always stimulates me like anything like this quote it always stays in my mind okay (laughs) it suits your personality for sure yeah i think that's why i relate to it so much and um, going a bit um, further down to my list of questions, mm-hmm. uh, what would you say uh, are the three most important characteristics of a dance couple? Like, what makes a dance couple great? Three main. Mm. It can be anything. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, I think I got it. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, I think in, in in order to in order to be a successful dancer, I think that you need to have some sort of uh, charisma or flair, uh, and I think that that comes through personality. So I think that no one should really try to conform to what Peter and Zia are or you know whoever. Uh, I think to be yourself and to actually allow that uh, that was something I didn't do for many years but I think that that to have your own uh, charisma I think is number one uh, number two a hundred percent being able to find that one person that you are able to do it with your partner obviously um, both and it doesn't you don't for me it's not about being together privately or not um, but it's more about having that person where you uh, you trust them, respect them, um, enjoy dancing with them, but I guess also their company. But finding that one person that you can do it with, because I always said um, I never wanted to do any kind of dance form that was by myself. I, I Maybe because I'm also a twin, I'm so used to sharing with other people. So that for me is the second thing. And the last thing is what I always say, um, work hard uh, because no one gets it for free okay. uh, so work hard meaning uh, work hard to, to make the money that you need but but work hard within the dancing uh, make uh, make practice your first priority um, because if you start getting misled in all other directions uh, I don't believe that's going to bring success yeah that, that's for sure one of the things also in, in my opinion I think I've learned that you need to work hard. It's in not, order for it doesn't you come to, naturally to Pete to no, the work hard no. part. If I can sit and imagine, and imagine myself it's... becoming the world champion <laughs> yeah. and in the same time it happening, that would be ideal for me. But I figured that that's not possible. So yes, hard work. Both people wanting to put the work in is for sure one of the most important things. For me, the second most important thing would be that both people are in the same mental space if that makes sense that they're on on the same page and that you can that they feel that they can relate not only maybe not necessarily backgrounds but they can for sure relate in a dancing sense and they're that that they can agree on whatever direction they want to take or even if they can disagree they can talk it through Mm -hmm. so this is why for me being in the set being able to communicate things and being completely open and completely honest without being scared of well, if I say this, then he's not going to like it or she's not going to like it. So that will be for me the second most important thing. And the last thing, you can call it charisma, you can call it it factor, you can call it whatever it is. For me, it's just I'm, like special partnerships. There, There is something about the two people. And I don't know if that's from the word go that these two people are just meant to be together or it's developed through time. But you all great competitors or great couples in in history have this thing like they kind of belong for each other so whatever that thing is i think is another some sort of chemistry right chemistry yeah you can call it that Uh, that would be the third so we actually have almost the same yeah (laughs) i can't believe that must be a first (laughs) 
<laughs> certainly not in our teaching that we do that. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I know that you mentioned uh, about personality, and that is one of my favorite questions that I ask almost every dancer. Is that do you think the personality you have in real life influences the way you dance on the on the dance floor? Like the style of dance you develop is influenced by your personality or your character or something like that. Interesting question, yeah. Uh, my opinion is that there is two ways. You either make your personality or your personality is being created through your development as a dancer or you act it mm -hmm. um i it it wouldn't be my choice mm -hmm. uh i wouldn't necessarily want to do that myself although i think maybe when you start you always admire someone so you will copy someone to like as a junior or whatever but i i think that as as much as i respect very good actors i think it's the most genuine when it comes from within and when it comes from your true personality or you the person dancing on the floor and expressing what you want to say that's my opinion at least uh, yeah i mean when you, when you're asking does your real life personality uh, come through in the dancing and uh, i think it should uh, i think it a hundred percent should because i know there are lots of people who might have a different opinion and i really don't mean to to disrespect anybody but it, it, how I see it and how I would like to do it um, is very much so that I believe that dancing is an expression of what we have to say and we can't find any other way of expressing ourselves than through our dance exactly. and in order for that to be the most sincere and to be the most honest um, and the most real I believe that those two personalities can't be two different things it, it must be channeled uh, in an honest and sincere way um, I, I don't really believe in the whole thing that you, you need to act it and you need to take on a persona mm -hmm. of, um, uh, I don't know, uh, in order to characterize the dances. I think that you can still uh, characterize the different dances of how you understand them and how you feel them, but again, it goes through you. It kind of gets uh, translated within you before it's it like comes out. It's like a filter. Exactly, yeah. 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 So I... I um, I, I really think that it's important to actually to, to keep your own personality in there because I think at the end of the day when you when you think through history the the amazing dances that there are um, and have been I think that they were just who they are yeah. um, and I think that's inspiring so and in terms of amazing dancers uh, who would you be your idols well they're and so we're not talking ones. about your parents right now. <laughs> no, there, there will be so. In my opinion, I mean, there, there, are so so, there are so many. There are, there are so yeah. many that I that we get inspired from. Yeah. I mean, some some nights we can just sit on YouTube, and before we know it, we've sat there. Four it's in the four morning. in the morning, and we just <laughs> have watched so many videos. Um, I mean, the first one that springs to mind for me is Carmen. She has always been an inspiration. She still is. Um, we are lucky enough. Uh, to be able to have her as one of our teachers um, and I, I find her very inspiring and I have always done um, but I don't mean I, I have loved also Alan Tornsberg and Vibeke Tuft I have loved what they had I loved uh, Dima Timokin and Anna Bezikova mm -hmm. um, I'm missing lots now aren't I? I don't know uh, Rica your... Ricardo and Julia a huge inspiration also um, but but I, I I mean Michael and Joanna I also find them as a huge inspiration mm. uh, very different very yeah. different um, and and of course within within all the different couples um, they inspire me in different ways it's not exactly. all the same things that I yeah. like uh, I guess that's quite normal but I I really really find huge inspiration even I mean even in dances uh, there was someone that made a comment now um, running up to Blackpool, we were doing some different preparation camps and, and someone made the comment to us, oh well preparation camps are not really like for couples like you. And I said, oh but what do you mean? And, uh, and they said, oh well you know, it's only the preparation camp is really for the lower level couples because they will go to these camps and get inspired by, well, by you guys they <laughs> said, um, but, but for you guys you've got no one to get inspired by. And I thought, 
that that was so development. That was, that was yeah. such a strange comment because, I mean, well, the different preparation camps that we did. I mean, there were couples that, I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but they only make the ninety six. I get hugely inspired from practicing next to them, mm-hmm. um, for for different reasons again. Yeah. So I think inspiration doesn't just lie in the hierarchy of who is number one and who is number two. I, I think inspiration can come through personality, um, uh, the rumba walk itself. I mean, it can come through so many things, yeah. uh, humor even. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, there are so many people that inspire me. Yeah. From the top of my head, if I need to think male dancer that have inspired me or have been part of my, let's say, dance journey, um, Slavic will for sure be one. Um, Brian Watson it will for sure be one. Dima Timokin will be one. Um, Genia Smagin will be one. Alan Tornsberg, um, Donny as well. Um, so yeah, these will be the kind of top of my head. I'm I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Yeah. But these were will probably if I if I need to think what are the biggest inf- who are the biggest influences to my oh, dancing. Sergey Milia, of course. Sergey, yeah, very watch them much. Also yes. Lovely. But yeah, yeah, these will be the, the yeah. from the top of my head. Yeah. 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 All great names. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Legend. Franco. Yes. yes. Also. Franco. Yes. Uh well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I know that you guys have been uh, both WDSF dancers as well, and now yeah. obviously you're WDC. What piece of advice would you have for dancers who would like to switch federations? Either way, like even for a w- from WDC to WDSF and, or from WDSF to WDC. What tips and tricks or what advice would you have for them? I I grew up in the WDSF. Uh, this because me, of me where too. Bulgaria was and because like yeah. how the federations were organized and so on. Um, I grew up in that environment. I was there for I believe eleven years or something like this. Um, and and I think that there there for me there was a clear turning point once I started seeing WDC competitions or once I started coming to England to do the majors or just to see them or to do junior Blackpool, I started seeing, oh, there is another world out there where things are very, very different. different. Um, and this is when my mind started turning. But my only piece of advice would be if they're in a situation when they want to switch, I would say just do what your heart tells you to do in the mm-hmm. sense of if you feel like you want to switch, do it and do it now and don't be afraid because the more you hesitate and the more you think, will it be the right choice? Is it now? Or should I wait an another year? I, it's just a waste of time. The if, years will pass you by yeah. and, and you will end up never Nowhere. really doing what you want. I, I completely agree with Peter. I, I'm definitely not going to be an advocate for saying one side is better than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, I literally see it like this that some people like the color pink and some people don't so uh, you just dance wherever you like and that is different for everybody but I really think that um, I hear a lot of people are talking about oh they're scared of of making a decision Um, and well I'm for one I mean I'm never afraid of making a decision because I always think, well, if I make the wrong one, I'll make a new decision and I'll make yeah. the right one. Or you'll learn uh, from it. Or I'll learn from it. Yeah. So, uh, so I would also say, just don't, don't hesitate and, and, and try. That, I mean, I also always say that you don't know if you like broccoli well, until yeah. you try it or not. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, try it and see if it's for you. Um, and, and, and make your own choice. And, and don't try allow to, somebody yeah, else don't to Don't allow other people to, to dictate it. Or to mm-hmm. tell you... Yeah. No, you shouldn't go there for these and these reasons. If you have a gut feeling that, okay, I want to go there or I don't want to go there. I want to stay here because let's, I I think there is space for everyone in in our dance business. Whatever way you decide to go, I think you can find home. So as long as you are the one that makes that decision and as long as you are the one that sticks with it because you believe that that's where you belong, that's I think. And I understand these days, I mean, we were even in that situation ourselves. I'm going to say it anyway. I, I know that for many people it's also a financial thing uh, because it definitely was that for Peter and I because um, um, 
so I'm half English, half Danish, but I grew up in Denmark, which is under the WDSF, uh, and there is huge financial support there, and, and uh, I mean, we keep on joking that we, we could have maybe lived a very, very yeah. different life yeah. had we uh, been dancing for Denmark and, and in the WDSF, um, but that choice was just not right for us, because we yeah. didn't enjoy dancing there. Yeah. Um, so we made a different choice, and and that was all, it was it was a tough choice because, like I said, I mean we were we were cleaning six days a week, and we did that for five years, mm. um, and that was tough. Mm. That was really tough, mm. um, and and I think many people uh, are, are scared because they they don't think that they will be able to have a choice because of the finance, and um, I would also say again, don't don't even let that. The finances dictate the decision. Make the decision for what you like, mm -hmm. and then find a solution that fits that decision. To whatever problems you want. Yeah. Then then meet find a way. way. Yeah. Like whenever Peter and I have to make a decision, even if it's going on holiday or, or whatever it might be, we always say, okay, so what's the ideal situation? Yeah. What would we really like for this to be? And then it might be something that is completely out of reach, completely unrealistic. But then we say, okay, so. What is? How can we get close to that? How is can it we possible to make it happen? Yeah, like how Peter made you his partner. <laughs> kind of, For yes, example. exactly, exactly. It was a long stalking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, yes. yeah. So yeah, yeah. I try to stick yeah. to what you like. A very yeah. valuable piece of advice. Yeah. And thank you guys. For sure. Um, and uh, we're getting closer to the end, and I would like to find out what you love the most about the dancing world. I was going to say everything, but that would be a lie. <laughs> um. For me, is that for me is that it's a, it's home. Um, maybe because I've been in it for so long. Maybe because I I don't know. But every time when the majors come, um, it feels like even people that I'm not very close with, or I'm not in contact with, it just feels like a family. Mm -hmm. So. I, I wouldn't go, to me, I wouldn't go as far, no, actually I will. It gives you a sense of purpose. I, I definitely think it gives you a sense of purpose. And I definitely think that people are supportive and will help out others. Uh, yes, we are competitive and yes, you want to beat this guy or whatever. But as a general thing, I think the dance world helps if someone needs help. Um, so this, this feeling of belonging somewhere and feeling part of something bigger mm -hmm. um, and feeling part of a family um, is for me the special thing about dancing or the dance world as such yeah uh, i i totally agree with that um sure. i think that would probably be the main the main part of it but i guess as a girl i i i, I <laughs> love the the whole the, the glamour of it uh, I'm not saying that I'm just dancing so I can wear a pretty dress and have my hair and makeup done, but um, uh, uh, I enjoy the show. Yes, I, I enjoy that part of it too. Um, and I, I love that there is a platform uh, to be able to express. Um, yeah, which, which for me, in a way, that is an, is, is an art form. And, and to be able, what I love most about the dance world is that it gives the platform to be able to express mm -hmm. and to be able to share a passion again with other people. And for me, that, that whole thing, the, the whole thing about sharing it with other people that understand that same passion, um, it, that kind of reinforces itself mm -hmm. and it comes back to you like a boomerang. And, and yeah. that for me is the whole joy about this world. Um, yeah. Mm. Because for me, really, it, it would mean nothing if you didn't have anybody to share it with. Very true. true. Very true. And what do you love the most about your dance partner? <laughs> Everything! <laughs> oh my god. Um, that she's a fighter. <laughs> yeah, she, do she doesn't give up easily. Yeah, if at all. <laughs> wow. uh, for Peter I was going to say well what I love about him is also what annoys me so much <laughs> it's, but, um, this. Yeah. It, it's his stubbornness mm. it's if he puts his mind to something he he will 100% do it 
do it. Yeah. And, and he will say like the most ridiculous things, which are the most unrealistic things. Like, how how many watches is the AP or whatever they're called? He's gonna have a whole collection of these expensive watches, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, fine. But it wouldn't surprise me if he one day do it because he is so <laughs> stubborn, and when he puts his mind to something, he he will stick through it. You you have a Peter has a persistence. Uh, and it well, comes clearly, because uh, otherwise I wouldn't have gotten with you, would I? No, and you, you have a stubbornness, and, and I, I admire that. I admire that. And if you would go back to your 12-year-old self, what piece of advice would you give to yourself? It's a difficult question, that one. Yeah. Be a little bit less closed within myself, um, because I feel that a lot of... A lot of things, a lot of nice things could have happened earlier in my life if I was just a little bit more open to receive them. Um, and not just the guy with the hoodie and the headphones and I know I'm going that way and that's the only road I know. Um, yeah, being a little bit more open. Not, still not get distracted, but just open and open to people, open to possibilities and broadening your perspective a little bit more. But it's a difficult thing for an Aries because we only know our way. <laughs> I know because I'm a Taurus and I, mean, <laughs> I get what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And for you, Zia? Um, I think uh, to have to have the confidence or to have to have had the belief to listen to that little inner voice uh, th that we all have. You know, we all have it. it that tells us do we have a good feeling about this or a bad feeling about this um, in any kind of situation and I wish that I would have um, this instinct or this little voice we have in our head I, I wish I would have um, listened to it a little bit more um, I was always uh, and still am to a certain extent very scared of listening to it and I don't trust myself okay. uh, so uh, this is where we're the perfect match because I will always seek the answer in Peter um, mm. And, and then ask the guidance for my parents but um, I, I would wish that I had dared to to trust to, to trust it a little bit more from an early age okay. yes I, I agree <laughs> I, I know what you're saying I know yeah. what you're saying yeah. I do trust my feelings but I know what you're saying about trust and yeah, yeah. I, I guess it comes with me maturity and then you, exactly. you, you, you try it out, you, you do listen to that inner voice and then oh it worked out it quite was well not that and bad, then actually. it was not that bad and then, then it kinda of developed. So um but but yeah, I wish that I had been more aware of being able to to make that choice earlier. Yes, thank you so much guys. <laughs> it was Very an well. amazing interview. Yeah, I love talking to you. Um and Pleasure. Until next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you.